As a teenager during the early 90s web, I built all kinds of dodgy websites. A site about the sequel of my favourite video game that didn't exist yet, a site about my only hobby that involved physical activity, skiing, and a site I made for my year 11 physics project, Fiberweb. If a teenager showed creativity like this online, you might think they're destined to one day strike gold with the next big thing. As you probably guessed, that didn't happen to me. I went on to study computer science where any interest I had in fun coding side projects was snuffed out by boring lectures about things I didn't care about. A computer science degree taught me to become a great employee, to follow the default path of climbing the career ladder and getting a comfortable monthly paycheck. If only university taught real world marketing, sales and the technical know-how to build your own thing. But instead, when you graduate, you only see one option. So I jumped straight into a job, 13 years tweaking my CV so I could become the ultimate senior Java developer. After all that time, I finally decided to do something different. It was time to build my own stuff again, to go back to what excited me about the internet all those years ago. So eight weeks ago, I started building a thing. In this video, you'll discover what it takes for a previously job-loving developer to break away to build their own project. You'll see how I chose an idea, what new technology I had to learn, and how much money I eventually made from a tool I built with my own hands. If you're anything like me, there are multiple things that annoy the heck out of you every day. Things you don't share with others, but make you scream inside like a little girl. Like how hard it is to find t-shirts that are extra long without being extra wide. Tall people problems. Listing all the things that annoyed me left me feeling cleansed. Maybe I thought, rather than waiting for someone else to solve these problems, I could solve them myself. What, a little old me with no knowledge of front-end development? Come on! But a little voice urged me on, and as I looked through the list, one jumped out at me and hit me in the eye. You see, the last few years I've been trying to create YouTube thumbnails that don't make me go Ugh, when I look at them a week later. As a YouTube addict, I'm aware of the power of thumbnails and titles to get the click. I wanted an easy way to see how thumbnails look on YouTube before publishing, a place I could compare variations side by side so I could pick the best one for an upcoming video. And that was the idea for my first web app, just a tiny thing that annoyed me enough to write it on a list. The good news was I had the back-end skills to make this happen. The bad news was this tool would be almost all front-end, and there was a huge gap between my 90s HTML skills and what I needed to deliver a modern web app that even I would consider using. So what did I do next? Maybe take an online course, join a JavaScript bootcamp, and create a to-do list app. That's what front-end beginners should do, right? Well, screw that. I'd once used a JavaScript framework called Vue, so decided to jump in and create a simple page to show a thumbnail and title, just like YouTube. How hard could that be? So I followed the getting started guide and tweaked it until I had an image with some text below it. Good start. I added the channel name, view count, and duration above the image, which is a right pain in the ass to style. I copied the heck out of YouTube until I had something that was almost pixel perfect. Achieving tiny goals like this makes you feel like someone who actually gets shit done, and it motivates you to keep going. So I coded the ability to add more thumbnails until you could fill the whole screen with them. I'd created a minimum viable product, MVP. Yes, it was unpolished, but it actually solved the problem that originally pissed me off. That's why I started to enjoy using this tool. But what if I was all alone in the world with this problem? With 8 billion people on the planet, surely there was one other. My first user was out there somewhere. I just had to find him. Yeah, it was a bloke. Your first customer might be closer to you than you think. I was part of a Discord group that shared my interest in making better YouTube thumbnails. Maybe one of them might try my tool. Maybe it might help someone, I thought. After days planning how to share it without being spammy, I posted a link into the community and hoped for the best. No, I didn't suddenly get hundreds of hits, but my analytics did show a few visitors other than me. Some users said they liked it. One guy even took a screencast to show me exactly what else he wanted. Legend. New features like drag and drop were simple enough to implement. Others like adding multiple thumbnail boards would be more complicated. Before jumping in to implement the suggestions, I asked myself one question. Could this tool become useful enough that someone would actually pay for it? I decided to find out. Common wisdom says to build the shiny new feature, then find someone who will pay for it. But what if you build it and nobody takes the bait? 
I'd heard one idea on the Indie Hackers podcast of getting people to buy something before you'd actually built it. This was a next level strategy I just had to try out. So I explained the idea to the guy who gave feedback and sent him a Stripe payment link. I felt like a sleazy salesman, but it was something I had to do. I walked away from my laptop thinking I'd made a big mistake, pissing off one of my only users. But an hour later I got an email, a beautiful message from Stripe saying I just landed my first customer. No freaking way. With a customer, your tool is no longer just for you. Someone's bet cold hard cash on your project and it lights a fire under your ass to keep coding. For two more weeks, I wrote messy front end code, added UI components I never thought possible and hooked up a database. Out the other end came the feature my customer asked for. When you can fulfill someone's request, it feels great. My tool was becoming more useful, not just for me, but for others too. But eight weeks after starting my web app, I still only had one customer. I'd made $29, great, but that wouldn't be enough to keep going indefinitely. Some people love to point out that any developer can create software. It's marketing it that's the biggest challenge. There is truth in that, but I'm not gonna let it stop me. Marketing is human psychology, and there's no reason a low empathy software developer like me can't learn it. I'll make it my life project if necessary. With still only one customer, I'm trying to talk about my web app more often, to not be so afraid of putting something I made out there into the world. Posting a few tweets probably won't be enough. Maybe sending hundreds of cold messages to potential users is what it will take. But I think building your first web app proves something more important, that you as a developer have the skills to create something useful in the world. That releasing a software tool that you and maybe other people want to use isn't just for companies, but it's an opportunity open to individuals too. And this is just project number one. There are more annoying problems to solve, more opportunities to get better at coding and to improve all the other skills needed to make it online. See you in the next one.